This is. This is. This is the Bottom Bends Podcast. Oh, yeah! Hello, and welcome back to the Bottom Bends Extra. Uh, bit of a different episode um, this week. Um, I got a lot of mas- uh, messages during the week um, about last week's top 15 summer transfers um, that we were thinking of putting together. So we just thought, look, we'll go away, think of another content idea. And the three of us put our heads together and managed to come up with the top 15 free agents this summer. Um, free agency is obviously something that people do tend to be interested in. People like to know um, who's about, whose contracts are coming up in the summer. And what that could mean for clubs. You know, obviously with free transfers, you don't need to go in and spend money on these players. It's just about getting contracts Mm -hmm. sorted. So we have narrowed it down to the top 15 best players this summer that are out of contract at their current clubs at the end of the summer. And we, for, for this video idea, we have just thought to ourselves, we're looking at who they're most likely to go to, i.e. the clubs that they're possibly being linked with at the minute. And then we're also looking at a club that we personally would like to see them play for. Um, so, Oren, do you want to kick us off then? Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Uh, so, as you say, Connor, we're looking... When we're, whenever we give our prediction for the club, we're, we're looking to see where we think would, they would best fit in. So, folks at home, definitely get involved with us. Tell us if you agree with us. Tell us where you would like to see these particular players to go. Um, and we got all this information from transfer market. So if there is players that obviously it's time sensitive this episode. So there could be players by the time even this episode goes out who may sign new contracts or have already signed for clubs. Um, but as we are recording this, these players are all set for their contracts to expire um, on the 1st of July. So the first player I've went for is uh, Indica from Frankfurt, um, the French centre-back. He's a left-footed centre-back. He's linked with Liverpool City and uh, some other clubs in Europe. Um, so, look, he's, he's a young centre-back. He's only 23. Um, a lot of people might actually only know him from FIFA, to be honest. Yeah. Um, he's a very overpowered centre-back in FIFA every single year. Um, but apparently, he's, he's a really, really good footballer. I can't say I've watched him personally much. Um, but, look, top 20% of all centre-backs in the top five leagues for blocks and clearances um, this year. And that that goes to show that he's he's a he's a top quality centre back and uh, being a left footed centre back is quite rare as well. Um, so I think he'd fit in at any of them clubs that he's linked with. And um, the club that I personally think he's going to go to, or sorry, not the club that I think he's going to go to. I think the club he will go to is Liverpool, but the club I want to see him go to is Manchester United. And I know that is probably going to sound best to the to the viewers at home, but United lack centre backs at the minute you can see the current situation that we're in where we're having to play our best left back in Luke Shaw and centre back and yes he's doing a fantastic job Victor Lindelof has stepped up in the absence of Varane and Martinez um, but I would personally say we need to sign two centre backs one being in Dicka on a free transfer you can't go wrong left footed centre back he's an understudy to Rafael Varane he would do a fantastic job at Manchester United as a backup at the minute and then potentially breaking his way into the first team much like Canate has done at Liverpool um, I would like to see us sign him and the likes of Kim Min Jae from, from Napoli um, another fantastic up and coming centre back um, it's good to have a, a host of centre backs in your squad because once you do get the injuries which is guaranteed to happen you need quality replacements and the t- in terms of United at the minute we're relying on our best output at left back playing in centre half which means we don't have as good an outputting left back in Tyrell Malassia or Diogo Dallo as Ten Hag is preferred at the minute. Um, so yeah, the club I think he would do best in is Manchester United because I think we're also going to get rid of Harry Maguire. Um, and we just need options. We need options. I would love to see him at United, but I think he will go to Liverpool. Yeah, I, d- I think he would be a very interesting option um, for wh- whichever club decides to to take a punt on him. I think, like you said, Owen, he is probably most well known for his FIFA card. Yeah. Um, I think people from uh, last year, FIFA 22, will remember the the Frankfurt partnership of Niakate and Indica. Mm-hmm. Um, they were extremely overpowered um, in the, the game. League final in real life as well. They did. Um, so. He is a very um, he is a modern centre back and um, very comfortable on the ball. Has a big physical presence about him. Is a big strong guy, um, but is also very quick um, mm-hmm. as well. Very comfortable with the ball at his feet. Can play out through. Um, can play out through the back. Um, he was actually he did rank fourth in progressive and passing progressions in the Bundesliga as a centre back last season. Those numbers have dropped this year, but I think that is just because Frankfurt have been a bit poorer than mm-hmm. they were last season. Um, 
again, just a very exciting option. But it, it, it will be interesting to see where he goes. Mm. Um, I think City would be a good option for him. Uh, Liverpool would also be a very good option for him as possibly a replacement for the likes of Matip. Mm-hmm. Um it would be interesting to see him go there but again yeah look on a free transfer I would definitely want United to be sniffing in, in and around um, mm-hmm. a player like Indica definitely yeah definitely for Man United it could be a good option because uh, they obviously have Varane who's injury prone as we know and Maguire probably will leave this summer so to have another centre back in is vital and I also agree with you about the, the Napoli centre back mm-hmm. I think there's like some thing in his contract where it's like he only costs like 12 million or something for mm-hmm. like a month July or something in the month of July but yeah we need a as you were saying he can play he's very good on the ball so Ten Hag system he'll fit into um, and then obviously he can develop maybe he'll not just start straight away but he, he can develop as a centre back with Liverpool they do need centre backs mm-hmm. as well like Matt Tip is getting older and that's where the likelihood would the as well go. has been struggling as yeah. well Joe so, Gomez not good enough yeah so they do need centre backs this summer so they might go for him Yeah, but as you're, he's only what is it, 20? 23 23 yeah. so He'll no, definitely he like, a load of suitors. Bundesliga yeah. is a decent league as well. Yeah. Um, Matt have came from the Bundesliga mm-hmm. and he's been actually he has been good for Liverpool. Yeah. Obviously, he's just a bit older now and injury prone. But uh, yeah, he'll, he'll probably be coming to the Premier League. Yeah. yeah. Dorman, do you want to kick yeah, us off so your number one? My first one is uh, Charam, who plays for Borussia much in Blackback. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> <I'd>, <laughs> that's a hard thing to say, <laughs> Borussia Blackback or yeah. Um, but he scored 13 goals in 28 games this season with five assists. He's a he, he is a top striker. They were looking to keep him on, but he's rejected their contract. Oh right, okay. Um, his 10 caps for France. He was in their World Cup squad. He got on in a few games, played well. Uh, he can play a left wing or striker. And there's loads of clubs in for him: Arsenal, Inter Milan, mm-hmm. Man United, Chelsea. This one is hard to know where would he go. He's only 25 as well, so he's versatile. He scores pace, goals. He can score goals. Yeah. He was flying before. We had done a parlay um, around January time. I think mm. it was when Man United needed a striker. Ah, and I was like, they need him because he, he would have only cost it. Five million, million or something? Yeah. yeah. And he's a top striker and he was absolutely flying. He's maybe dipped a bit, but there's definitely talent there. I was thinking, see, Inter Milan, he could go there because Lukaku could leave. Mm-hmm. United need a striker, but maybe we'll go Kane. But two strikers would never be, you know, especially on a free transfer. Yeah, like, yeah, definitely. You know what I mean? But I think maybe Bayern Munich. Because mm-hmm. they are desperate for strikers. Since Lewandowski's left, they have not been the same team. They're obviously playing Chuba Moting up top. Yeah. He's, he's been okay, but he's not a top, top striker. Mm-hmm. And I think a player like this, who can score goals... Has already done it in the Bundesliga. You know, the Bundesliga is not a bad league. He's in the Bundesliga. And Bayern do like to take the best talent mm-hmm. from uh, the Bundesliga. And he's been linked to them. So I think he'll go to Bayern Munich. I don't think that's a bad shout. Um Turam is uh, one of those players. Look, I, I can remember around our World Cup um, period recording the episodes. Um, look, I, I was never too keen on Turam. I did think there was some big faults in his game, um, especially in the track and back end, to be honest. Um, I think at his time at Mönchengladbach, he has played as more of a left wing, yeah. sort of left midfielder. And the one thing I noticed about him, especially on that front side, was... Deschamps loves players who can be aggressive when they're out of possession and he just wasn't that type of player. He was very much kind of stay up and and look, maybe those were the instructions that were given to him. I, I, I don't know, but to me, he didn't. It just didn't seem like the sort of hard-working, laborious type of player that was going to um, come back and help the team out. But I suppose if he's playing as a striker, you probably like, you don't really you're need really to worry either. about him doing that. But like the only thing I would say about United is Ten Hag does like United to play on the front foot um, when they're out of possession and... I don't think he'll give you that same sort of work, that same work rate that like a Veghorst or a Martial does. But in terms of the actual quality of player, he's a very good footballer. Mm. Um, can definitely score goals. Has proven that in his Bundesliga career. Um, yeah, always a stalwart for a Bundesliga team of the season every mm-hmm. year. Um, so there's definitely talent there. He he is a he is a very uh, sort of laboured footballer. There's talent. Um, a good goal scorer. Um, very again, one of those like sort of physical players. Um, very quick as well. So I think who, wherever he ends up at, they're getting a top quality striker. I would agree with you, Connor. I could see him staying in Germany to be honest. And I think your natural progression in Germany is if you play for one of those Midland sides, it's time for the step up. It's time for either Dortmund or Bayern Munich. And with the way the Bayern are playing at the minute, they're desperate for like a Lewandowski type character again. And I think Taram would go in there and would do very very well. No, I agree. I, I, I honestly don't disagree with anything that you've 
both just said there. I would I think Bayern Munich's probably his best suitor. Um obviously looking a striker. Um a Lewandowski uh, sized hole that needs filling. Um and I could take two strikers. I see they're also linked with his French his French compatriot, uh Cole Moani. Um, but he's gonna cost big, big money. Yeah. Um but yeah, no, I think he'd go to Bayern Munich. Um if he doesn't, he could maybe go to France. He could maybe go to PSG, yeah. Um, someone like that there, or or Leon. Um, I have a Leon player who's leaving, a Leon striker who's leaving, um, on my list for later on, and he could definitely replace him. Um, or Lacazette's a bit long in the tooth as well. Leon, he, he could definitely go back to France, but I can't see him going to, coming to the Premier League. Um, I think it will be Germany or France. Um, but I, I, Bayern Munich probably his most likely destination mm. for me. Yeah. No, definitely. So for my first transfer, guys, um, we're recording this episode on a wed- on the uh, Wednesday. So um, news has literally just broke there earlier on today that uh, this player, Lionel Messi, won't be signing um, his contract renewal up at Paris Saint-Germain. So when his contract is up on the 1st of July, Lionel Messi is officially a free agent. So the obvious link, of course, is back to Barcelona. Um, his, his club that he spent so many years at established himself as one of the greatest of all time. Um, so they are the obvious club that are leading the race. But the side I actually have here that I would like to see him go to is something that I think every football fan on the planet has wanted for forevermore. And now that they are at an age where they're both a bit older, um, but it's still something that I think people would relish the chance to see. The club I'd like to see Lionel Messi sign for is Al Nasser. I would like... Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo to give it a run together and it's just just for everybody to see if they could have done it together mm. and what if if they were successful at, at, at Al Nasser together and showed if they contributed to ridiculous goal numbers over there it would be incredibly interesting just to look back and think God what would it have been like if they played together at yeah. PSG or Barcelona or Real Madrid? What what would that have looked like? Uh-huh. So, yeah, Lionel Messi is my first player. I think by no stretch of the imagination is Lionel Messi finished. I think if he, if he went back to Barcelona, he's immediately the best player in in the Spanish league yep. again. Yep. Um, so I think his World Cup performance is still highlighted that he has still got it, and at the age of thirty five, there's still there's still something there's still something left in the tank, and I think. For him, I think if he went back to Barcelona, he'd want to deliver at least one more Champions League before he retires. Mm, no, I fully agree. Uh, I'd love to see him at Alnacer as well. For the romance of football, for the romance for all the all the football fans around the world, what it would actually do for Saudi Arabian football mm-hmm. is ridiculous as well. Like Even Ronaldo's transfer over there has done so much for them. Um, it's got more eyes on it than ever before because, look, megastar. Um, so if they had both the best footballers ever in the same team it would be absolutely ridiculous for the romance football i'd love to see it happen and look he, he just got suspended for two weeks for because of a, a unauthorized trip to saudi arabia you never know you never know um but yeah barcelona looks his most likely destination um it's just whether they can sum up the funds um i'd like to see him back at barcelona as well for the romance of that too um because i think although i'd love to see him play with cristiano ronaldo i don't know if ronaldo's going to stay in saudi arabia but i think in terms of Lionel Messi, and I think any football fan around the world shares the same opinion, whenever you think of Lionel Messi, you think of Barcelona. Whenever you think of Barcelona, you think of Lionel Messi. Mm-hmm. And I think he deserves to finish his career in yeah. the club that he made and the club that made him. That's the thing is, if Ronaldo's going to stay in Saudi Arabia, because there's a lot of talk, he might leave. But I would agree, Barcelona would be a spot, but can they afford him yeah. you, can t- you could even tell when he left the first time he did not want to leave he was mm-hmm. crying in the press conference they just completely yeah. messed it up he was meant to go and they fucked up yeah and like it came to the part where there was no way he could stay even wages or whatever mm-hmm. you know so and like looking at his stats obviously in the World Cup he was very impressive as well player of the tournament won, helped him win the World Cup um, and even his stats I know the French league isn't very good let's be honest yeah. but he still has like 15 goals 15 assists yeah. he maybe didn't play as well in the Champions League but He's playing for PSG and they're a weird old team, PSG, you know. Uh, but I, I do think Barcelona. But will they be able to afford him? I don't know. But there'll be plenty of suitors for him. Oh, 100%. It's just going to be his wage demands as well. Yeah. Because he is going to... Could we see him in the Premier League under Pep Guardiola? <sighs> I, I, think, think I, th- so. I think that ship sailed. Yes, I would agree with that. Because... I just can't see it. Maybe three years ago. Yeah. Or well, it was three years ago he was linked to City, wasn't it? I could have seen it three years ago, but I think... I think that ship has sailed. I actually don't think Pep would take him at City now, to be honest. I don't think he would. 
I think this might be his last club as well. Yeah. I think he's yeah, going to retire time. in a year or two, yeah. and I think he'll be done. So I think he will want to go to Barcelona, but if it's not possible, he might end up in Saudi Arabia mm-hmm. or somewhere like that. Mm-hmm. And he was, that's what you said about him being suspended. Yeah. He was over there, so God knows what was happening. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, on to my number two. Um, so my number two is an established Premier League footballer. Um, not necessarily for one of the top clubs. He, he was at Manchester United for a spell, um, but he's, he's done his best work at Crystal Palace, and that's Wilfred Zaha. Um, he's been linked with Arsenal, Chelsea, and Villa. Um, Aston Villa, obviously, under Ernie Emery, have, have become a, a, a European chasing team. Um, and we've seen what he's done with some of the players, including like Bundia and stuff. Um, so I think he would be absolutely phenomenal if he did go to go to Aston Villa. Um, his Premier League experience speaks for itself. Um, I know he mightn't get you all the goals, he mightn't get you all the assists, but he was the main man on that Palisade for years and years, and he's probably the main reason he's kept them up for years and years as well. Um, because he's never had the superstars around him, they've never really spent to build a team around Wilfred Zaha, but he's always delivered when asked upon. And Now he's getting a bit older, he's 30, um, so he will be looking for, although he is only 30, he could realistically be looking at his last big move. Um, I would say this next club is going to be his last big move before he maybe ships over to Saudi Arabia or goes to the MLS or something like that. Um, but I would say this will be his last big move. He's linked with loads of clubs in Europe and all as well, the likes of Borussia Dortmund, who I'd actually love to see him at as well. Um, but the club I think he should go to is Tottenham Hotspur um, I think it would be absolutely phenomenal for Spurs um, even if it was just as an understudy to human son but he's a very versatile player Zaha he can play on the left he can play on the right he can play up front um, I think if they do lose Harry Kane which it does look quite likely to be honest I think they need as many forward options as possible um, I, th- I think he immediately comes in and as controversial as this might sound I think he's better than Richardson um, and I think he'd be, he would just deliver for Spurs whenever he's asked upon, whether that's in the cup or whatever, whatever capacity the new manager would need him, I think he would deliver for Spurs. Um, I am a bit torn because Wilfred Zaha is a player that I'm just really not that fussed on, to tell you the truth, and I, I never really have been all that fussed on him. Um, I think that maybe the chance for his big move is gone. Um, I think when he was linked with clubs sort of three, four years ago before he signed like his, his new contract at Crystal Palace, I thought that was the opportunity to, to go and, and really showcase his talents. Um, for me personally, I think like clubs like Spurs, Chelsea, Arsenal, don't get me wrong, I know they're linked, but I don't actually think anything will come of them. Um, oh, I think they would, lad. I, I, I don't know, lad. I, See, I, I was going to agree with you on that point. I thought... Wasn't it when Pepe went to Arsenal? Yeah. He was linked then, yeah. but they wouldn't spend the money on him. Uh, I can't... And Everton bid like £60 million Maybe like Spurs or ch- like Chelsea maybe would take him, but I just don't know. I would agree with Connor there. I don't know if a top, top club would take him at 30 years of age. I know he still is a good player. Is Spurs a top, top club? Well, they're going to get a good money. Well, they're, they're part of the traditional big six, yeah. so yeah. So that's true, but like, like, they're bigger than Palace. Is, and I don't think... Is he not good enough to play for Tottenham Hotspur? He would be good enough, but I don't think... <sighs> You were saying maybe like an understudy for Son. I, I can't see him sitting on the bench. He would want to play every game. And I then, think he would play every game, to be 100% honest. For Spurs. Mm, I, I Unless they were to send someone, he's better than what they've got. If they lose Kane and get Zaha in, I don't know if that's... He's not better... Not to be a striker. No, I know that. He's not better than Son. He's not better than Kane. He's not better than Kulisevsky. I don't think he's better than Son or Kane, but I do think he's better than Kulisevsky. No, I don't. I don't. I think Kulisevsky's a brilliant player, but I, I think he's a really underestimated yeah. uh, Wilfred Zaha. Uh, look, maybe we are. Maybe we are. Maybe we are. I, personally, I've never just never really been that fussed on him. I've always thought he was pretty overrated, to be honest. Maybe it's the Man United thing because he was such a. No, it's not. It's not even the Man United thing for me, lad. No, uh, genuinely. Be it's it's just more, no, genuinely, uh, genuinely. Look, it's it's not the Man United thing for me. I was just never thought he was that great, to be honest. I just like everybody used to just, just always talk about oh Wilfred Zaha this Zaha that. I always just thought he was a bit overrated, to be honest. Like if you look at some of his numbers over the previous years, like his dribbling percentages aren't great. I know, but many times have we said in this podcast that numbers aren't everything. Like, Look, I know they're not everything, but like he's he's like he's literally kept Palace in the Premier League since he got promoted again. Uh, That's a fact. No, he's been he the reason best for that. Player. He's been the catalyst for that. 
And I think it's hard to say that he's overrated because he plays. No, no, like I don't think he's overrated. Balls. I still I think, think he's a good overrated. player, but it's just I can see him likely going. But I think he overrates himself. Yeah. Though, I can see him going. I agree with that. I do agree with that. I think he thinks he's better. I think he thinks he's better than what he is. I agree with that because he's an arrogant fucker. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. His attitude on the field at times is terrible too. Theatrical. And then at the end of the game, there at the weekend, he gets hooked off in like the 90th minute or something, and he was yapping, and, he, and I've seen Ben Foster was talking about it, because he's like, he's just done that for the cameras, yeah. to be like, oh, I, I shouldn't be taking off, I'm too good for Palace, all I this. Do you know, that, that. that's, and if Spurs are going badly, or Chelsea are going badly, mm-hmm. it's going to look, he's going to be theatrical, if he's not starting, Yeah, that's and, what I'd be worried about. The and only like thing each... I would say is about Leandro Trossard going to Arsenal. I like, think Trossard's a better Trossard's player. No, 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 I'm not saying he's not a better player, but I'm not saying that, yeah. like, he obviously is a better player, yeah, yeah. but, Trossard's 30 as well. Like No, Trossard's 27. 27. Well, whatever. His, his big club, or his big move, didn't. It, it looked out of the realms of possibility because he should have left maybe last year. He should have left the year before. Like Now, it, it, Trossard only left because of his attitude problems or what was said to be his attitude problems. He was leaving or he was even being talked about signing a new contract. Wilfred Zaha could 100% go to the likes of Chelsea, could 100% go to the likes of Arsenal. He's not necessarily going to start every game, but there's that many games in a season, he's going to play football. I think it's just very hard to say he's overrated or he, he, he's his next club should be somewhere in like fucking Saudi Arabia or something like that. There. No, no, by all no. means I'm not saying that there. I think there's still a place for him in the Premier League, but it's not at any of the traditional big six. Mm, I disagree. I disagree. It's, it's, it's a hard one, like you know, he is good enough, but it's just his age and his theatrical. He's kind of theatrical. Like it's just mm. like if he wasn't starting and they weren't going well, he'd be a disaster. Like, it'd just it's be not a that it for wouldn't a new manager as if well. he did go to the likes of. Do you think Potts would take or him or? Well, you know, Chelsea, yeah, hundred percent. See, I don't know. Hundred percent. I don't know. No, Potts, Potts will not have a say in any transfers. Yeah, that's true. And he is free. I see he's linked to Chelsea because Arsenal or someone like that wouldn't go near him. Well, Arsenal's the most obvious link with him. I just couldn't see them going for him. Like, they're, they're the most obvious. He wouldn't for start. It would, it would, it would surprise me if he signed for Arsenal. It really, yeah. really would. Mm. It really, really surprised me. Look, honestly, I think I, I will be surprised if he signs for any of the, tra- the traditional big six. I won't. I won't. I'm not even saying he's good enough necessarily to play for all the traditional big six, mm. but. Gonna, it's about names as well. But what about no, everybody no, knows what for Ah, don't don't get me wrong. It's the same with what about, Messi. What yeah, about like a Newcastle? Maybe no. You never know. See, Newcastle might go for I just, I just, I think at thirty, the ship is sailed. I just because all these teams are building for the future and they're building for future title charges, and I just don't see Zaha fitting into a project like that. Mm-hmm. If anything, he's he's like a quick fix for somebody. That's what I see him as. Chelsea. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Look, maybe I do just have a bit of personal bias against him. I, I just, I, I never really liked him. I always thought he was a very arrogant guy. And I always, I just thought his actual football ability was always pretty overrated, to be honest. And for me, when he was even linked away from Crystal Palace a few years ago, I always thought to myself, like, he, do you know who he reminds me of, in all seriousness? But maybe to a, a lesser extent, St. Maximin. Mm. Uh, that's who he reminds yeah. me of and I don't like St Max no. I don't think St Maximin's good either I think these players are showboat footballers I don't actually mm. think they're good footballers think to be honest selfish like on the yeah. ball as well yeah. his final delivery isn't good I agree with that but that's what I'm saying at a big club would they accept that well it, it depends like the way I see Wilfred Zaha is if it was at a big club he's not going to be the superstar anymore yeah. I think he gets away with it because he is the number one man at Crystal Palace mm-hmm. so he dictates everything and that's why probably his ego is big as well yeah. but I think when he goes to a club if he was to go to a bigger club and have different personalities a manager that will fucking not let him away with the shit he mm-hmm. does at Crystal Palace yeah I think he could be a fantastic squad player for one of the big six clubs. I think he could be a fantastic player for one of the six, big six clubs, traditional big six. Well, well, it's definitely inter- yeah. it is an interesting it's a good one. It'll be time good to see out. where it goes. It Time will be interesting to see where it goes. It is interesting because yeah, yeah. he, he could end up just signing the contract at, at a yeah. Palace, you know. You can see that too. I think he's a definitely a Champions League footballer though. Not necessarily in the Premier League, but I definitely think he plays for a Champions League club. Oh, like, like I think a Borussia Dortmund, a Borussia Dortmund. Someone, someone. If it's abroad, if it's. Uh, Spain, if it's Germany, Italy, whatever. Yeah, I do think he has the capabilities to play for a Champions League club. If it's fucking Benfica or something like that, there, do you know what I mean? I think he has the capabilities for it. I think he's too good for Palace. Yeah, but it'll be interesting. It'll uh, be interesting. It's definitely interesting to see. Yeah. Dorman, number two. Well, um, 
I'm going to go with Tillemans. Um, I know he hasn't been performing this year as well. He's, he's definitely leaving Leicester, but I still think there's a top player there. He's 25, a good all-round midfielder. He's like over, like he has 60 caps for Belgium, you know, and that's a top, yeah, team, top team, you know, in Europe. Number one ranked for years. He's been a great player in the Premier League for three or four years, or at least uh, still young, as I said. Arsenal, Chelsea, Spurs, Liverpool looking for him. I, I think Arsenal would be a good shout. I think any of the teams would take him. Liverpool need midfielders, yeah. as we, we've been saying. But I think he's more like an upgrade. Like, maybe not... No, I'm going to say it. He's like an upgrade on Chaka. Oh, no, he is, definitely. You know, he's mm-hmm. definitely an upgrade on Chaka. And I don't know why they didn't go for him in January. Yeah. I really thought if Arsenal got that Jorginho. midfielder, like that kind of player, you can sco- like he hasn't scored as many goals this season, but he can score goals. And defensively, he's Solid. not too bad. Like, even at the... During the week there, when he scored against, or when they were playing Everton, mm. he won the ball back. He gave it to Madison, goal. That's mm-hmm. what he has in the locker, and I think he has dipped. Uh, he's not the only Leicester player that's dipped in form. A lot of players have. It's been a bad season for mm-hmm. Leicester, but I think if he went to Arsenal, they like under Arteta, we're seeing all these players improve as well. He he could become a top top player. Mm-hmm. He already is a really oh, good he's, player he's in the straight. Premier League. Like he's been a top player in the Premier League for yeah three or four years at yeah. least. So I think. Like any of them teams would take him. Like Tottenham mm-hmm. would definitely take him. Mm-hmm. Chelsea, but I think Arsenal would be a really good fit for him. Yeah, I agree, Connor. I think Arsenal would be a really good fit for him too. Um, obviously, Arsenal have been linked with him for probably two or three yeah. years now, to be fair. All these guys, you know, they get linked away from the clubs that they're at because they're the best player mm-hmm. at the club that they're at. And Telemans has consistently been Leicester, one, or at least one of Leicester's best players for three, four, mm-hmm. five years, really, from a broke into Leicester's team. Um, he is. I mean, he delivered them in FA Cup. You know, he'll probably go down as a Leicester club legend. Um, even even though it is only sort of a brief spent stint of four or five years, but he, he's always been a fantastic footballer. I didn't realize he had as many caps for Belgium yeah. um, as what he had. Yeah. But even even in his youth youth days at Anderlecht, like he was always one of the most talked about prospects mm-hmm. in Europe. And yeah. I feel like he has sort of delivered on that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I want to go and see him play Champions League football now. Um, and I don't think I don't even think wage wise he's not gonna he's no. not gonna cost you too much. Think about him as well. You're right, Leicester the FA Cup. Them two years they came fifth back to back years, yeah. and he was one of their best players. Yeah. And they really should have got Champions League football yeah. probably both years. Yeah. yeah. So that just shows how good he is. And then at Anderlecht he was yeah. top player. Monaco as well. he was on really. Yeah. He was. Yeah. Move. People forget how he was at Monaco. Yeah. 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 Was at Monaco for two years before he went to Leicester. I know. Yeah. And it, yeah, I can't disagree with. This. I think he'd be great in Arsenal. Mm-hmm. I think he would fit perfectly in Arsenal. Yeah. Best being best, I would love to see him at Man United because I think <laughs> we need options in midfield. Um, but yeah, I think Arsenal would be his, his best suit, especially like I know I know you kind of think that Arsenal's time is to win the Premier League was probably this season, it was their chance. But I think that Arsenal team just with the youth coming through and he fits that kind of uh, that stigma as well because what is he 25? 25, 25 yeah. like he's no age, do no. you know what I mean? So he fits Arteta's philosophy and still is an ah six seven years in the Premier League ahead oh, of him, like you know, so. top years in the Premier. He yeah. hasn't even hit his prime. Yeah. realistically, his prime years is probably two or three years away. Yeah. But if he's playing in a top club with top top players around him, same as I was saying about Zaha, if he has the likes of Gabriel Jesus and Martinelli and even the experienced heads like Xhaka and Jorginho around him, that's only going to improve his mm-hmm. game more as Definitely. well because he's the main man in midfield at Leicester. So people are learning off him, even though he's only twenty five. Whenever he, the, the experience has like Jack and Jorginho around him yeah he'd, yeah he'd be fantastic for Arsenal definitely definitely yeah. definitely going to be one to watch over yeah. the summer big time um, my second um, free agent this summer is Adrian Rabio of Juventus um, was obviously linked with Manchester United last summer very very nearly um, happened very glad it didn't because <laughs> we ended up getting Casemiro but um, the side that he's being linked to the most at the minute is Liverpool again he is a midfielder so the Liverpool are the type of club that that need midfield options but mm-hmm. uh, I'm going a bit rogue with it and the club that I would like to see him at next uh, at next is Borussia Dortmund um, I think for the style of football that Dortmund have played this season Rabio um, alongside um, what do you call the Turkish boy is it Ozcan for or Urkan, uh, the guy who plays for uh, Dortmund. Uh, it's, some, it, it's, it's Ozcan, I think it is. Ozcan, yeah. yeah. He has really broke out this season um, and has been phenomenal for Dortmund this year. I think he's actually one of those players in Europe that has gone completely Under underappreciated, uh, underappreciated this season. I think him alongside Rabio in a double pivot at Dortmund could be 
the midfield partnership that maybe delivers Dortmund their first Bundesliga title since 2012. Um, so I would like to see him personally go to Dortmund. Um, I think even his style of play would suit the German league a lot because he is a very work hard midfielder he does have physical attributes that allow him to dominate games in midfield and I just think him and your guy Ozchan as a partnership would be really really good but again um, if he if he is looking for that that dream Premier League move well who better to work under than uh, Jurgen Klopp in, in a midfield that is notoriously known for being pragmatic and progressive I think Rabio would suit that very well playing on the left hand side of, of, the, of that midfield um, has the ability to drop deep and retain possession but can also get forward he has scored I think 14 goals for Juventus this season he's their top scorer this yeah, year yeah he's their highest goal scorer this year so just shows that he can arrive late in the box mm. as well and get goals that's what Klopp likes from his midfielders so um, either of those clubs Liverpool or Dortmund I think would be a great fit for Adrian Rabio this summer I agree. I would say I would say more so Dortmund, just because obviously there is that attitude problem with Rabio that he does have that kind of mean streak in him, and I don't know if uh, uh, Klopp would be the man to take it out of him, but mm-hmm. I don't know if he wants to have that uh, problem going into this season, especially after this season. Um, but yeah, Dortmund would be a good fit for him. It wouldn't surprise me if he went back to PSG. Mm-hmm. To be honest, it hasn't worked out for Renato Sanchez. That by Fabian hasn't really done it much, um, and people aren't liking Carlos Soler over there as well. Um, so it wouldn't surprise me if he went back to PSG. But um, yeah, Dortmund playing Premier League or playing uh, Champions League football year in year out wouldn't surprise me if Bayern Munich were sniffing around him as well. Just in terms of their previous transfers, the likes of Quarantin Tolisso and stuff, he was went over. Um, but an established France international, he's always in Deschamps' team. He's always starting. Like there was times we were thinking, oh, guaranteed Pogba and Kante midfield, and fucking Rabiot's in there instead of one of them. Do you know what I mean? It shows that he is a quality, quality player. He has the quality to play for one of the best teams in Europe, and he wouldn't go amiss at Borussia Dortmund. No, definitely he would fit Borussia Dortmund. It's just more the wage demand that he will look yeah, for. Because when it came to United, he was looking massive All wages. Right. Yeah. Um, Liverpool as well, he'd be a top player. He's really good going forward, as you said, like 14 goals this season. Is, yes, he's quality. been Juventus' best player probably yeah, this season. Um, I even think like a Newcastle there could be a good spot for him because obviously they have, they have the money now and under Eddie Howe, he'd just improve even further. At the World Cup, he played well mm-hmm. as well. So I'm glad he didn't come to United, but any team, any of them teams would be lucky to get him. It's just well, going to be wages, isn't it? Well, that's the thing. Like, it wasn't, it, well, I'm not happy that he didn't end up at United because he's not he's a bad player that's yeah. I don't mean to say that sorry like it's just I'd rather Casemiro and I do think he has a bit of a stinking attitude to be honest and I think his agent is his mother it is, yeah, yeah. It is, yeah. which is always very difficult to deal with a family member mm-hmm. like that yeah. so I just thought that would cause more trouble at United and after the season that we had had I thought look we <laughs> that's not what, we, not need. what we need especially after just getting rid of Pogba yeah, yeah. but at the same time I, I do think Klopp could like Klopp takes no shit at Liverpool and I do think he could get him into a regimented midfield I really really do so I think if I was a Liverpool fan and Liverpool fans that listen to our podcast I, I think Rabio would be a really good addition to, to that squad Yeah, No I agree Definitely. Uh, My number three is uh, Alejandro Grimaldo he's a left back he plays at the minute for Befica um, constantly playing in the Champions League constantly playing in Europe uh, he's been linked heavily with a return to Barcelona he was a youth player there um, and Barca are keen for a left back and with them having no real budget it, it, it could be a, a good fit for them um, the only thing about Grimaldo is he's never played for Spain so I don't know if Barca would take him back based on that aspect but he has 17 goals and 47 assists in 191 league appearances for Benfica and the club I think he would suit best is Juventus um, so Juventus have had Alexandro playing in their left back position for years and years um, whenever he first arrived he did look like he was going to be one of the best left backs in Europe for years to come um, it didn't quite work out like that and fans aren't really appreciative appreciative of him anymore and yeah I just think you need some experienced heads in he is only 27 still so it's not like he's, he's hasn't got it left in the tank um, experienced heads in have, have done it in Europe um, but it's time for him to make the next step and I would like to see him at Borussia Dortmund as well. Something with Rafael Guerrero leaving on a free transfer as well. Um, it, it could be a leg for leg swap, but personally, I think Juventus he would suit best. Yeah, always one of those players around Europe. Everybody knows who Grimaldo is, you yeah. know, because he was always notoriously very, very small, but very, very attacking. Yeah. Um, I think the one thing or the biggest fault in Grimaldo's game is that he's not 
great defensively. Yeah, but that is just most Spanish fullbacks anyway, to be honest. They're, they're not coached defensively. They're coached with the ball at their feet and progressing the play. Well, that's another reason why I think Juventus. Sure, they've stuck with Quadrado and right back yep. for the last yeah, how many years. Yeah. So he's a winger. And definitely, I think at Juventus, you could definitely see the, the best elements of them come to the fore. I think Juventus are just in a bit of a turmoil at the minute, so I think for them, they just need to get a manager in and they need to get settled, and I think Ronaldo would be a great addition to, to bring in there at Juventus. Um, I also think he could go to the Premier League, though, mm. too. Like I think at City, he City, would do yeah. really, really well. well. I was thinking about City, too. Um, I think Pep would relish the chance to work with him. Look, he has been one of the better left-backs around Europe, really, from he broke onto the scene. Always, maybe not in the top bracket of left-backs, but definitely the, the, the bracket just below. Um, so, yeah, I'm really interested to see where he ends up this summer. He, he'll, he'll go down again as a Benfica club legend, no doubt about it. Um, has been one of the better players that, that has played for them in recent years. But, yeah, it is, it's time for him to move on and maybe get his chance at, at a big, big club now. Yeah, as you said, he'll want to go to a big club now. Obviously, he's played in like the Champions League. Benfica were one of the mm-hmm. a, t- a good team to get to the last eight. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Barcelona could be a good shout as mm-hmm. well because he's Spanish and they're going to look a lot of free transfers because they don't have much of a transfer yeah. budget. And he knows the club. And he knows the club. Again, defensively, maybe an issue, but in them leagues, as you said, with like Cadrado and all, yeah. even at Juventus and Barcelona, it's not really about your defensive. Yeah. Jordi Alba's not a good defender, you know, do you know what I mean? But then, like you've seen, even like Poro's come in for Tottenham, mm. and he can't defend. Maybe in the Premier League, he maybe would be a bit... Ah, exposed. Exposed, yeah. is maybe his only problem. Uh, Jordi Alba, what do you see now? He must be... He's 35 or so. Yeah, so they're probably... And he doesn't defend, so... <laughs> yeah, so it just... Fuck, he could be, it, he could be brilliant for them. He'd fit in at any of them top clubs. Like, yeah. Good, good defender. Definitely. Or good fullback. Dorman. Yep, so I went for... Asensio from Real Madrid. Uh, he's 27 now. It feels like he's been around forever. He's yeah, a top yeah, player. He's played like over 200 games for Real Madrid, which is crazy. He's played like 26 games this year, eight goals, six assists. They are looking to keep him. Um, he is playing on the wing though, which doesn't really suit him. He's more like a 10. Yeah. So he might look to leave. He's a creative player. He's been linked to... Well, he can play either wing and mm-hmm. then he can play as a cam. But he's been linked to Arsenal, Liverpool and Barcelona. I don't think he, I think we were talking about this a few weeks ago. Liverpool they have a lot of they have a lot of good forward attacking options. So I don't think he'd go to Liverpool, but yeah. I think Arsenal could be a good shout. Mm-hmm. I know they do have Saka and obviously Odegaard's a good cam. He could play like that right wing, just you know, to improve the squad. Yeah. He might not start every game. He could like even Smith Rowe there, he's been injured a lot, he hasn't been playing much. He could play in front of him. Like he he'd be a good squad player. Mm-hmm. That's the thing, is he looking to start? He could be good enough to start. Eventually in that Arsenal team, like he could play that. Well, Odegaard's playing the camera role, but maybe Odegaard could sit in the centre mid role. I don't know, but uh, he's a top player. He scores a lot of goals. We've seen him. He plays in the Champions League. He's played in, like for Madrid. They've won Champions League. So he's been playing in the team. He scored in the Champions League final. You know, he's going to have mm-hmm. a load of suitors too. I think he might stay at Madrid, but if I was to pick a team, I think Arsenal. Again, Arsenal. Yeah, it's definitely a very interesting one to be honest, Connor. I remember actually Asensio's like breakout season. Um, I think it was like sixteen, seventeen. He yeah. broke out and he scored a lot of goals that year for Madrid. And I think he, he's never really got back to that kind of form. He got the bad injury. Yeah, and I kind of it sort of killed it of off a wee bit. And a bit of that, you know, skill. Yeah. But he still is a good player. Yeah, oh, definitely. I'd agree with you. He hasn't reached back to that peak he was at. Yeah. Now, like, don't get me wrong. I mean, he still played for Real Madrid for X amount of years. You don't play for Real Madrid for that long if you're not a good player. Um, I am very interested to see where this ends up. I think the one thing we've said about Arsenal this season is lack of squad depth. And if they were able to get two at each position, it it helps them out massively. So I think Asensio to Arsenal would be a really smart bit of business if Arsenal could get that done. At the same time, I could see him going somewhere else around Europe, though, too. Um, the, I, like, I think you know the likes of like an AC Milan or someone would suit him really, really well. Um, somebody in that Italian league w- could look at him. Again, maybe, maybe the likes of PSG look at him as well. Um, I think he would do well there, too. So it is very, very interesting to see where he ends up. But I think, yeah, definitely, if we're talking Premier League, I think Arsenal's the, play- or Arsenal's the place for him. And I I think they should really be licking their lips at the chance of signing a Real Madrid player. Yeah, I would say Arsenal in the Premier League as well. I, I do think Bre- uh, Bayern Munich could be a good option for him mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. There's a lot of... I don't know if you've seen it on Twitter. There's a lot of turmoil going on at the minute at Bayern Munich. Yeah, definitely. Lads. Obviously, with Tuchel just coming in and yeah. Nagelsmann being sacked kind of out of the blue, the players aren't really happy. But apparently Tuchel wants rid of Muller. He wants rid of Sané. He wants rid of... Uh, 
what do you call this? Do you think Mane used to is there? Arsenal? Gnabry. Gnabry. He wants rid of Mane after what happened between him and Sané yeah. as well. So, Jesus, they're crying out for forwards, uh, and especially a winger who's who's versatile. And Marco Senio could do a job there too. Definitely. I, yeah, you could see that big time. Yeah. But big time. I think we could do a whole episode on the term Isle of Bayern Munich because it's, it's, it's really, really not good at the minute for them. Um, so my third player that I've gone for that's out of contract um, and this summer is Ilkay Gundogan of Manchester City. Of course, look, we all on this podcast know how good Gundogan has been at Manchester City. Has been hampered by injuries, but these last two or three years, you would say he, he does not look out of place in that Manchester City midfield. He is a cracking player. Um, I actually thought, you know, when he left Dortmund and went to Man City, I always thought that was a bit of a weird trip transfer because I always thought he was good but I never thought he was going to be as good as what he actually has mm-hmm. been yeah. and he really really has been an integral part of, of City's team over the last number of years I would say he won them the league last year last year yeah, yeah. with all those goals that yeah. he chipped in with even in the last day of the season yeah Look, he is a player that is known for arriving late in the box, getting and scoring goals, but he's also incredibly comfortable in possession. He's played under Pep now for the last few years, so he definitely has that experience now whilst on the ball. The biggest club that he's been linked to this summer is a return to his former employers, Borussia Dortmund, wow. who again I think would be an absolutely excellent addition. Um, but the side that I would like to see him play for, it's a bit of a rogue shout, but just with how things have been going this season in the Champions League, I'd love to see him go to AC Milan. I think it's time uh, for Europe to see the two Milans back at their best again. I'm so glad that we have a Champions League semi-final of the two Milan sides. Italian football has been football that has been looked over now for the last 15 years, really. And it's time for this league to start to slowly but surely get back to its best. And I think the signing of Gundogan to SA Milan will be a statement signing. Um, their midfield at the minute is lacking depth. I actually do think Inter's going to beat SA just on the fact that they're going to kill them in midfield. Um, Benasser has had his injury problems this season, but I think Benasser alongside Gundogan in that midfield with Brahim Diaz at the cam, I think that's quite quite scary, really, for next season. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of teams in Europe would struggle to deal with that kind of midfield. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to go Gundogan. I'd like to see him at AC Milan, but more likely to end up at Borussia Dortmund. I think he'll go to Barcelona uh, on a free transfer. Barcelona... I think Barcelona is going to struggle for midfielders this year. I think it could create a domino effect that involves AC Milan mm-hmm. because apparently they're looking to get rid of Frank Kessier after just one year. Yeah. And I think, to be honest, wouldn't surprise me if he went back to AC Milan. Wouldn't surprise me if he went to like Spurs or something. Yeah. But it wouldn't surprise me if he went back to AC Milan. Um, for it, it would be a, a nice transfer if Gondawan went to AC Milan because, as you say, these clubs should be recognised for what they are. Football fans who like I would teach in school and all, they would look at me if I said, oh, AC Milan's a huge club, they'd be like, no, Juventus is the club in Italy. And you know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas we know AC Milan as being one of the biggest clubs in the world. We know Inter Milan as being one of the biggest clubs in the world yeah. who yeah. were powerhouses in Europe. And they're slowly getting back into it. And it's great for for football fans of our age and the generation before us to, to see that as well. Italy used to literally have a three-horse title race every year. Yeah. Uh-huh. SE, Inter, Juventus. That's what it was consistently every year. And... It's a shame now that... Well, I say, you know what? I say it's a shame, but we're going to get Napoli winning it this mm-hmm. year. That's yeah. massive. Mm-hmm. They haven't won um, the, the league from like 1992. Mm-hmm. So that that's going to be huge for them. And that, that's a story that you like to see. But at the same time, with the downfall of AC Milan and Inter Milan, it has been monumental. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They, they were two of the biggest clubs in world football. And... I remember going to school and people having like Inter Milan and AC Milan shirts. Like I used to have an AC Milan shirt, Same. but yeah. like Kaka on the back, on the back <laughs> yeah. yeah, or David Beckham. I had uh-huh. a Beckham shirt, and I remember when Ronaldinho played for AC Milan. Do you remember when they had yeah. Schneider, Balotelli all played for Inter? I got a Stankovic, like ah. Uh, Gone are those days, to be mm-hmm. fair. But I think that the signing of Gundogan would definitely be like a statement of intent for, for one of those Milan definitely. clubs. Absolutely, especially if they, if they get the uh, Champions League final this year. Definitely. No, definitely. Like when we were growing up, like obviously, I remember like in 2007, Milan just destroyed us. Oh, ripped, mm-hmm. us ripped us apart. apart. You know, 2005, they got robbed by Liverpool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like even before that, and then Inter Milan came about with Mourinho and stuff mm-hmm. like that. It's good to see them back, yeah. 100%. But Gundogan, I think. Barcelona could be another shout. Any team would take him because he is a top player. Yeah. I was thinking, like I was just looking at the stats there. Like I think it was like 2021, 20, or 2020, 21 season. He was 
unbelievable. I think De Bruyne might have been injured or something, yeah. and he scored 13 goals, and he was superb. He's kind of underrated. Yeah. I was a bit like you, he was at Dortmund, as kind of like, he was linked to a few clubs, like even United, and I was kind of thinking, oh, I don't know if he'd fit in well, but under Pep, he has been unbelievable. Sensational. And he's kind of underrated, and in that uh, run-in last year, especially, he scored, I think he scored the winner mm-hmm. in the last day. Yeah. He's a big game player, and it'd be good to see him at a club like AC Milan, but I do think Barcelona again because of the circumstances the need free yeah. transfers but AC Milan do need to improve in midfield as you said because again an enter so much so much superior in midfield yeah. even like Napoli be better in midfield they do need to improve that position so he could end up at AC Milan but whoever gets him is getting a top player yeah. he's like 32 is he? 32, 32, yeah. 32. Still, still got a few like, years left yeah. I think City will be trying to keep him as well they'd be stupid not to try yeah. and keep well, him well I think he's already said that no, he, wants he, he wants to move yeah. he, he wants to move on yeah a new challenge like. yeah. yeah one last Which challenge before you finish yeah. the career yeah can't ask for much more uh, moving on to my penultimate pick um, I've got I would say he's a Liverpool legend it's uh, Bobby Firmino um, he's been linked with Barcelona of course as everybody in the fucking world is linked <laughs> with Barcelona uh, but yeah they need free transfer so you're going to hear Barcelona's name a lot in this podcast and really apologise yeah. for that but do you not get the call this morning lad no was your agent not on the phone telling you you're linked with Barcelona <laughs> sack me agent lad sack me agent <laughs> Fucking, it's a whole big thing I'll tell you later <laughs> yeah um, linked with Barcelona linked with Napoli um, who looked, who are going to be the, the champions of Italy um, I thought they were going to be the champions of Europe but uh, somehow didn't beat AC Milan well no, um, no awesome men in the first league yeah. leg did, didn't help well, they couldn't finish yeah. their chances yeah couldn't finish their chances but yeah linked with Barca and Napoli but the club I would like to see him go to is Borussia Dortmund Um He's obviously been linked with the likes of Bayern Munich and all as well, who need a striker. But the only thing I would say to that is, although, yes, I think ability-wise he would fit in at Bayern Munich and do an absolutely fantastic job, I think he has a great relationship with Sadio Mane. And I think Sadio Mane, I pretend I'm just steer fucking clear of Bayern Munich, to be 100% honest. Um, I think at Borussia Dortmund, they do a great job. Um, obviously, he can play as a 10. Um, he, he's not the generic striker. Um They've got Sebastian Haller, who's just come back from, from beating cancer. Um, and he's probably their main man up front. But look, if he gets injured, they've got Anthony Modest, who, don't get me wrong, he, he, he's done a great job in Germany since he's been there um, with Cologne and now with, with Borussia Dortmund. But he's a quick fix. I think he's like 37. So he's not a long-term option. Um, so I think getting in Bobby Firmino would only be good for Borussia Dortmund. And again, as as we've been saying about AC Milan, it'd be good to see Dortmund fighting in Europe, competing in Europe consistently. Um, they're really, really in a title race this year. Um, and especially with losing uh, a big, big name, such as Jude Bellingham, who looks to be confirmed to be going to Real Madrid, getting a name like Bobby Firmino in would, would definitely help keep the fans thinking, yeah, we've got a chance next year. Yeah, I mean, Firmino's always been one of those like sort of interesting players where... He, was, he can never really be defined by position. Mm-hmm. You know, he's a forward, but he can also be a midfielder. But he is can he also a, be a centre back, according yeah. to Liverpool fans. <laughs> but, oh, they love him. Go score yeah. centre back, but. but is he a striker? No. Is he a 10? No. no. He's something in between that. <laughs> he's class. He is. Look, I, for me, no, especially sort of, I, th- I think, particularly back to like that 17, 17 18 to like two years ago, he was elite. No doubt about it. He was probably in terms of like those sort of centre forward type positions. I don't think there was many better of better than him in, in Europe. Pains me to say that, by the way. <laughs> um, I think though he has seen a dramatic dip these last couple of seasons. Um, yes, playing time was limited, and I think Klopp kind of wanted to move away from that sort of style. And then, I mean, the signing of Nunez then only could sort of confirm that then last summer that that's definitely not the route Liverpool want to go down anymore. But I think whoever gets him is getting a top player. I I think a new challenge is, is going to be good for him. Yeah, it'll not be in the Premier League. No, it, no it'll, it'll definitely not be in the Premier League. But um, uh, yeah, I think a Germany, going back to Germany, would, would make a lot of sense for him. Mm-hmm. Had a very successful stint at Hoffenheim there. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it's what got him his, his move to exactly. Liverpool in, in the first place. So I think a return to Germany. Italy, yeah, I could definitely see him in Italy. I could see him at PSG too, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they do like those types of players, so I could see him there too. Um yeah, plenty of options he's going to have this um, this summer. Uh, Italy as well. Mm-hmm. I'm sure there's clubs in Italy looking at him. Uh, like especially uh, especially Juventus. You know they lost Ibala in that sort of central forward role, the the player between the midfield and striker. 
Firmino could perfectly just go in there and play that position. You mentioned Dybala, he could be a good option for Roma. For Roma too, yeah. It looks like they're going to lose Dybala Dybala this 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 summer summer for 12 million. So, So, look, there's there's going to be plenty of suitors for him. I would like to see him out of the Premier League, to be honest. Um, Done with him, but... Done with him. (laughs) I don't think he would stay anyway. No. No, he wouldn't go No, I think, look, it's time. It's time to go away. It's time to get a new challenge. There is definitely still a player in Firmino. Not as good as the player he was a few years ago, but I still think he could offer teams plenty. Mm -hmm. Um, He can score. He's more known for being the build-up, the link-up player. And I think there's plenty of teams out there that would crave uh, a Roberto Firmino. But he's like a selfless player. He's very, you know, he's... A more team player. Mm-hmm. Obviously, Mane and Salah loved him because he basically, you know, he didn't. Instead of he shooting, wasn't looking he for the audits yeah. or he was He's a weird one because uh, as you, I agree with you there. I think Bayern need an out and out striker like a goal scorer. He's not really a goal scorer. No, you know, he's not score. I looked at his stats there. Like he's not scored over fifteen goals in the Premier League every season, but he is a top player, and he was a nightmare to play against. He always played really well against Man United, yeah. of course. Um, so. Dortmund, Juventus, P- PSG could be a good shout because they do need a player. Like he works hard for the team as well, and like PSG had the front three name or Messi and Mbappe, and they were getting killed in the Champions League because mm-hmm. none of them tracked back. Mm-hmm. So it could be a shout there. But anywhere he goes, he's just going to improve, isn't he? The team, maybe Dortmund, could be a shout. Uh, they do have a good few strikers, as you say. So it's just like any club would take him mm-hmm. with any of these players. Really, any club yeah, is going to well, take these players. Yeah. So, but he'll get a top club. He might. I seen he was linked to Barcelona, but that's as yeah. you said. Well, it, apparently, like all the reports were saying, and um, that a deal was agreed with Barcelona and yeah. all this here. But Fabrizio Romano came out and David Ornstein came out and said that's not the case. Um, so the the race is still open for him. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Yep. So me. Connor. Yep. So my next one is N'Golo Kante. Uh, I think he should leave Chelsea because they're a disaster. Obviously, in recent years, his injury record has been really poor, mm-hmm. but he's a top player. Even when he came back there, when they played Liverpool, he was really good. I think even going forward now, he's improved a lot. Mm-hmm. Defensively, obviously, brilliant. Uh, the Champions League run, he was unbelievable. Best, He got the best player in midfielder in Europe that season. Um, that was pro- he was probably the best midfielder in the world yeah, that he, year. Like. That, that finally got man of the match. Mm-hmm. He destroyed De Bruyne, let's be honest. Yep. Um but like any club would take him, Arsenal, Man United, Barcelona, Liverpool. I think Liverpool should go for him to replace Fabinho because Fabinho has been... I don't know what's happened to him because, again, he was one of the best defensive midfielders in the world and he has just fallen off, fallen off the cliff. Like, yeah. um, PSG's another shout uh, because they need a, a defensive mid as well. But I think if I used to choose a team for him to go to, it would be Liverpool. He is a midfielder that is going to have no shortage of suitors yeah. mm-hmm. this this summer, realistically. Yes, you look at the injury record, it is shaky, but maybe it makes you sort of think, because I remember the story coming out about Bowley sacking all of Chelsea's me- uh, medical mm-hmm. staff. You know, mm-hmm. It does sort of make you think, you know, if he goes to a club with world-class facilities, could they get him match fit again? He's still only 32, you mm-hmm. know. He's not old no, by, any, not. by any means. You know, I think the same way we were talking about Gundogan a couple of players ago, we're talking about Kante in this similar vein. He still has years left in him. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm interested to see where he goes. I could see him playing in the Premier League, yes, but I do think that he's going to move out of the Premier League. I think maybe it is time for him to step out, go somewhere else and apply his trade somewhere else. And I think um, a, a club that Connor's already mentioned, PSG, could, could be the destination for him, to be honest. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. I would love to see him at United best, but I would love to see him at United because he's world class. But I also think he's going to leave the Premier League. Um, I think I would say PSG is probably his most likely destination Mm -hmm. where I would love to see him and where I think he would actually be unbelievable, not just on the pitch, but off the pitch, is Real Madrid. I think Mm -hmm. if, if, I think honestly, if Kelsmiro had stayed at Real Madrid, Chiumani would have been one of the best centre defensive mids in the world in the next two years. And I think he still has that ability, but he doesn't have the guidance of a world class centre defensive mid anymore. And if you throw Kante into that team, imagine learning under someone you watched play in the World Cup yeah. winning team. Yeah. Something like that there. I just think he would be brilliant for Real Madrid. But it, it's so weird, even though I... And tell me if you agree, even though we all know Kante is one of the best midfielders in the world, like, uh, in his peak, did you, do you ever, like, envision him playing for Real Madrid or something? That doesn't... To me, it just doesn't seem like a fit. No, see, to me, it does seem like does a it? Does it? See, I could, I could never I can see him in the white now. No, I could see him in it now, but I've, I've, I could never imagine him like signing for Real Madrid. I could never, even when he left Leicester, 
and went to Chelsea. I could never see him going to outside of the Premier League. I could never see him going to like Barcelona or Real Madrid or anything like that. Well, when he left Leicester, I did kind of think, oh, this could be a step too much for this guy. Mm. But after the first season at Chelsea, I was like, no, he's actually too good for Chelsea. Mm. I always even thought he was too good for Chelsea, to be honest. I thought he belonged at one of the big boys. Like I thought he belonged at Real Madrid, uh, to be honest. So, I'm just interested to see where he ends up now because, look, that is the question about him. It's not its not his ability. It's can he stay fit? Mm-hmm. And I think, again, yeah, look, maybe a bit biased. I'd love to see him at United too because... It surprised me. We were linked to him last year. If, if, him, if you could interchange him and Casemiro game by game, you would you would lengthen Casemiro's career and lengthen Kante's career. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You could have them for four years, for God's sake, between the two of them. Mm-hmm. So... Um, I, I just I, I think it's I think it is just time to move on now to be honest and and I think PSG is probably where he's going to end. I was always shocked PSG didn't go for him. Yeah, I'd agree with you there. At Chelsea, the one he won the league straight after, didn't he? Went yeah. to Leicester, won the league straight after, yeah. won the Champions League, won the FA Cup. Like he will be a club legend there as well. He's it's just because maybe he's not as flashy, you know, as these other yeah. players. Like he just does his job. And he, he's improving going forward. I think it was under, who was it under, like Tuchel or something? He was trying to play him in like a cam role. Yeah. Yeah, that wasn't probably the best fit. But I do think PSG is maybe the best shout outside of the Premier League. But if Liverpool, he would fit in so well. He'd fit in well anywhere. Like, but They're always playing him out of position. Like even Lampard the other night had a front three of yeah. Gallagher, Kante and that. Sterling. Jesus well, Christ. under Sarri, he actually did change from a CDM to more of like an eight. Yeah. And that was actually probably his best... Mm-hmm performances to be I honest personal year. I actually think he has developed from more of a 6 into more of an 8 so yeah. he's got the engine for it like yeah definitely look I but I think if you dropped him back to 6 he would actually get less injuries mm. because the position's not as strenuous yeah. um so I I yeah I'm just very interested to see where he ends up, but he's definitely not staying at Chelsea. No. Not a chance are Chelsea going to be able to, to tie him other. down. He needs to get out of there. Yeah, yeah. Not, not, not a prayer to Chelsea keep Kante on next year. Good enough for them. <laughs> uh, the fourth player I'm going for is uh, one that we actually mentioned a little bit earlier, but he is uh, out of contract at uh, Borussia Dortmund this summer. That is Rafael Guerrero. Or Guerrero, sorry. Um he has probably been one of the most consistent performers in Europe over the last six or seven years, to be honest. He never really seems to put a foot, for, uh, put, put a foot wrong and always seems to be amongst the goals too at, at Borussia Dortmund. So um, the main club that he is actually being linked with at the minute is Wolves. Shock, because he's Portuguese. Portuguese. Um, the club I'd like to see him at is Spurs. And the reason I say Spurs is I think uh, Perisic is not... A left back, no, nor is he a left wing back. But I think Guerrero at that left wing back position would be perfect for Tottenham. He's 29 years of age. So yes, he is maybe coming towards that wrong or back end of his career. Not wrong end, sorry. That back end of his career. But I think for as a left wing back, if Spurs could sort that defence out and get a few signings in over the summer, especially centre backs, I think as a left wing back option, um, Guerrero would be absolutely fantastic there. But at the same time, could I see him playing for Wolves too? Yeah, I could. And I think under Lopetegui he would definitely develop and grow. I think one thing people have always said about him, and, and if you play FIFA um, like we do, uh, I think loads of people would love to see him as a centre mid mm. um, because he is a very all-action sort of um, left-back. You know, He can do the dog work, he can do the defending, but he does give you so much going forward that it would be very interesting to see him actually as like an eight. Um, but I know this is not FIFA. You can't just whack a position modifier mm. on somebody and hope that they can play that position. But he has played centre mid for Dortmund before and didn't look out of place. So I think as a replacement for Neves at Wolves as a, as a midfielder or as a wing back at Spurs, I think he would suit, he would suit either club, to be honest. Good utility player. Yeah. Always yeah. always, always was known for being a good utility player. Um, he performs week in, week out for Borussia Dortmund. He always performs for the Portuguese national team. Yeah, he deserves to go to a big club. Um, I could see him in Spurs as well. Um, especially, I think, he, <laughs> to be honest, I think he would have excelled under Antonio Conte. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think he would have done really well in that system. But, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see where he goes. And he deserves a top move as well. Probably his last big move of his career. Um, so, yeah, plenty of suitors. Yeah. Yeah, anytime I've seen him play for Dortmund or Portugal, he's just he's a threat all the time. Yeah. As you said, he's versatile. He can play centre mid I've seen he's played like left wing he's played yeah. everywhere um, any of them clubs would be lucky to get him uh, but like under Spur, at Spurs under that five of the back system I think he would have flourished 
but I don't know if they're going to keep that. I keep to that you know, system, yeah. But he, he is a top player, and at 29 again, he's going to look a top, top club, and, you know, maybe Wolves will be a bit below his. Mm -hmm. But Labatagi is a top manager, so he could maybe get him, but I think Spurs will be a good shot. Yeah. yeah. Uh, moving on to my last player. Um, so this is a player who, if McGarrett was here, he'd be raving and raving and raving about. Um, he's a former striker of theirs. He's Moussa Dembele. Um, Dembele had a great start to his career and was a really, really sought after 19 year old when he was at Fulham. Um, started and he, he played a couple of games for the French national team. Um, he then moved to Celtic. He played his best football there. Um, was always going to tear up the Scottish League, to tell you the truth. Um, got his move to Lyon. Um, I think it was £20 million they invested in him. Um, but now he's leaving on free. He had a, a loan spell at Atletico Madrid last year. Didn't really work out for him. But look, he's still only 26. He's been linked with the likes of... Is he? Yeah, he's 26, yeah. yeah. He's been linked with the likes of United and all in the past. He's not being linked with the massive, massive clubs now. Um, he's being linked with the likes of Brighton. He's being linked with Palace. He's being linked with a, a return to Atletico Madrid, which I can't see happening, to be honest. Um, but look, 152 goals and 47 assists in 352 career appearances. It's not a bad record mm -hmm. by any stretch. Um, but the club I would love to see him go to, the club I'd love to see him return to, is Fulham. Um... Came through the ranks of Fulham. I would love to see him as Celtic, don't get me wrong. I think he would be <laughs> unbelievable for Celtic, but that's not realistic at this moment in time. Yeah. Um, but I'd love to see him return to Fulham. I think they need a, a proper striker to, to compete with uh, Alexander Mitrovic. Um, I think Carlos Vinicius, don't get me wrong, he actually has had a decent season, um, but he's not he's not the man that they should be looking for, especially if they are to progress from their performances this season and maybe push further towards... Conference League football and European football um, and I think Moussa Dembele would be a, a great addition to the Fulham squad much like you said about Ward Prowse um, last week I just think he, he makes them better so why would you not go for him it's a realistic target to go for he knows the club um, and I think yeah just for the romance of it as well I would like to see him back at Fulham yeah I, I can't disagree with anything you've said there to be honest Oren I think you've had sort of hit the nail on the head uh, the only one or the only club I would throw in as maybe a bit of a spanner into the mix is just if Tony left Brentford this summer I think he would be a good option for Brentford too look he, he, he has proven over his career that he can score goals okay in recent seasons maybe not to the same levels mm -hmm. but I do think there's still a player in there. I didn't realise he was still only 26, yeah, only 26 to be honest. No, I thought you were going to say 29 or 30. Mm -hmm. It feels like he's just been around for ages. Um, so, yeah, I think at 26, to be able to go in for him and, and get him on a free would be a really smart option for Fulham. Um, similarly, yes, like I said, to, to work price uh, next week, definitely makes him stronger. Mitrovic always goes through patches of injury or bands. Mm -hmm. yes. um, so I think, yes, much better option to have uh, is Moussa Dembele than, than Vinicius. Although, yeah, Vinicius has been all right this year. Um, but I think whoever Dembele goes to, I'm, I'm just interested to see how his career goes. Mm -hmm. I always thought he was going to be one of the top strikers in Europe. I really did, because he had all the attributes of a top striker. It's just never really worked out for him yet. So who knows? Maybe he goes to the Premier League and can have a good goal-scoring season. And maybe people start talking about Moussa Dembele again. I hope so. No, definitely. It'd be good to see him back in the Premier League. I've seen he, he'd done all right last year, like 20 goals, but this year he's really struggled. Yeah. At Atletico, he struggled as well. Yeah. But there's a top player in there. We've seen it at Celtic as well. We would have seen it. Um, and, you know, any of them teams would be lucky to get him to see Villa in for him. Mm -hmm. But Fulham is probably more realistic. Because yeah. Villa obviously have Ollie Watkins, and maybe they'll, God knows, they have a lot of money and the great manager. So, love to see him at like a Fulham back at Fulham. Still young, like 26, 26, like he could still, yeah. you know, again we were talking there, like maybe he hasn't even had his prime yet, exactly. so it would definitely be worth the risk, free transfer as well, Yeah, you might as well. No yeah. risk at yeah. all, no risk at no, all. No, there is no risk yeah. involved in it, like he already knows the club, Yeah, yeah. and I can't imagine his wages are going to be ridiculous to mm -hmm. be honest. No, because in the French League they don't really, I, they don't pay they all don't that They don't pay highly. as much, and and especially being out of form, Exactly. Can't demand big yeah. wages. It could be a steal, we could look back and be like, how did they get him, Yeah, yeah. you know, but it was just because he dipped. Yeah. In so so drastically, year, so yeah. It's like, yeah. You know. He's no. made two Premier League appearances in his career. Look, it's interesting. Yeah. It is interesting. It'd be good to see how he fits. The only thing that worries me is Edouard is the other striker that's come from Celtic to the Premier League. Again, French striker too. I actually thought Edouard was maybe not as impressive as Moussa Dembele at Celtic. Maybe Owen would disagree with me. I don't know. I always thought... He personally wouldn't. 
I, I would say Dembele was better than, than Edouard. Uh, so, yeah. see, so Even I, though Edouard was class. Yeah. But you see Scotty Sinclair and, and, and Dembele. Dembele, Dembele yeah. was like more all around, around yeah. better, yeah. I think. Yeah. 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 So I don't think he would struggle as much in the Premier League as Edouard. And don't get me wrong, I have been shocked at how poor Edouard has been in the I Premier think, League. I think that's different scenarios though as well. Like he went straight from Celtic. Yeah. This is a player who's went and played in Europe. He's yeah. played he's played in the Champions League. Scored the goal to put City out of the Champions League yeah, a couple true. of years ago. That's true. That's true. Or two goals. He scored two goals. He came off the bench and scored two goals. Well, whatever he did, he came off the bench and he, he scored the goal to put City out of the Champions League. Like, Edward came straight from Celtic. Yeah. And went straight into the Premier League. Mm-hmm. And that's difficult. I yeah. think coming back at 26, having a bit of experience in Europe, top league in, in France, a top team in France, a top team in Spain. Yeah. Didn't work out in Spain. That's fine. Yeah. But he's got the experience. And I think he would maybe be more adjusted to the Premier League now when he's a bit more mature as well. Yeah, definitely. definitely. It is very interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. Dorman, final one? So final one is uh, Lerma, who plays for Bournemouth. Maybe not as flashy as some of these other players, but he has played very well this season. Bournemouth, obviously, are going to stay in the Premier League, but he's out of contract. He came from Levante for like £20 million. Yeah. Um, He can also play right back, but he's like five goals this season. Obviously, he played really well at the weekend. Uh, good CDM, I think. Again, it's like Liverpool need a CDM. Like any team, basically in that bottom ten that stays up, he'd be a steal. Mm-hmm. You know, you think about it like a Leicester. And Didi, what's going to happen to him? Is he going to leave this summer, or because he is really dipped in performance, mm-hmm. he'd be a good replacement for him, even like a Forest or even like a West Ham, mm-hmm. who will lose race. We'll I lose think. Race, yeah. So I actually think West Ham would be a good option for him because if they lose race again, we're just doing this like you don't know what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. But I think West Ham. He's a good. He's a good all round. He's good defensively. Can also score a goal or two. Yeah. He's a threat um, from set pieces. So I think any team would be lucky to get him. And obviously, he's been one of Bournemouth's best players. Yeah. Um, Bellin and Solanke have been their their top, the their top players. So he's really stood out for me this season. And I think West Ham would be a good, really good fit. Yeah, I'm actually surprised that Bournemouth haven't tried to get this maybe sorted yeah. sooner. Um, because it wouldn't shock me if he stayed at Bournemouth mm-hmm. either. But yeah. I totally agree with you, Connor. I don't think he's good enough quite yet to be, to play for one of the big boys. Yeah. Um, and I don't think he will be good enough to play for one of the big boys. But definitely this season for Bournemouth, he has impressed. Um, as I think the, the one thing I've been really impressed with about him is he's managed to keep his uh, disciplinary record in check mm, this season because yeah. he was always a stalwart to get sent off. I'm sure, do you remember when he first came in he got like four yellow cards yeah. and a red cure in yeah. his first five appearances? Like he, he just loved the <laughs> crunch boys, like, yeah. but he seems to have that under control now. Um, look, I, I think f- for Bournemouth it would be a big loss if, if they Definitely. lost Lerma because he has been a, a really good player for them. Um, but any of those teams sort of down in, in that bottom 10 are going to look at him and think, this is somebody we can pick up and, and can hopefully keep us in the Premier League. So yep. I agree, Connor. I think Lerma is very, very good. And I think any of those clubs sort of in around that bottom that sort of bottom 10 this season would, would do well to, to, to purchase him. Yeah, no, I agree. I don't think he's quite big, quite good enough for... The top level clubs, but middle of the table, towards the bottom of the table, yeah, hundred percent. I think he'd fit in at Fulham. I think he'd fit in. Honestly, I think he'd fit in at Brentford. I think he, he wouldn't look out of place there. He'd do a job for them. And um, he's got Premier League experience. He was one of their best players in the Championship as well, Bournemouth, when they went down. So he's look. He came for twenty million. There was no reason. Nobody, I would say, nobody expected Jefferson Lerner to stay with Bournemouth when they went to the Championship. No, but he showed his not. loyalty, and he went down to the Championship with them. He fought hard, got back to the Premier League, and now he's performing on a consistent basis for yeah. Bournemouth mm-hmm. like at Bournemouth's level um, so yeah he would definitely and be he's 28 so it's worth the risk 100% for definitely. CDM as well for CDM yeah. definitely and I think for me I think maybe what they're looking at now is maybe he didn't sign a contract because Bournemouth were going to go down and I think at 28 he thought look I'm still good enough to play in the Premier League well but it may- wouldn't surprise yeah. me if he's still at Bournemouth and that's sure. the thing and if Bournemouth stay up maybe he goes do you know what I, I'm just going to sign a contract I'm going to yeah. stay here um, so who knows but I agree with you Connor I think any of those, t- those sides in the bottom 10 and, and towards the middle of the table would yeah. definitely be interested yeah, in it um, and my final uh, transfer and the final transfer of this episode is Adama Traore of course we all know him Wolves is big muscly man mm-hmm. um, who's incredibly quick 
um, but has no end product, mm-hmm. <laughs> is available on a free transfer this summer. Um, so the, the side that he's been linked with the most at the minute is Paris Saint-Germain, um, which I'm actually quite shocked <laughs> at. for played him. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the side that I, I would actually like to see Adama Traore go to is Atletico Madrid. I think under that regimented system of Simeone, I think he would really, really perform at a side like Atletico. And I think Simeone would be the type of manager to get the best out of him. Um, look, he, like I just said there, I made a joke about it, but he is notorious for not being able to finish his dinner um, or be able to put a ball into the box with any sort of conviction. But listen, he's still 25. There is still a player there, I think, he can go to one of those sides and not look out of place. Um, look, I think the one thing we would all agree on, lads, is that when it comes to actually dribbling and beating a man, there probably isn't much better than him in the Premier League. Of course, it is just the end product that always comes into question. But yeah. I could see the likes of Atletico Madrid and Simeone looking at Adama Traore and thinking, this is somebody we can work with here. Yeah, oh, it would be a brilliant option. Like, like. You know, I, I do like Adama Traore and I do agree that he doesn't have the end product, but he's a very, very versatile player. Mm-hmm. He can play all over the place for you. He literally will play anywhere f- anywhere for you. Like, well, last season or two seasons ago, whenever him and Jimenez had that big link, he was playing right back, he was playing right wing back, right wing, left Mon wing, Cedigian. striker. Mon City scored two goals. Scored two goals. Yeah. That striker, yeah. That striker. Yeah. He's, just, he's a very, very versatile player. I think he does a job for, even like we said about Lerma, I think he does a job for any of them teams. You know, just outside the, the, the top six mm-hmm. and middle and towards the end of the table. Wouldn't surprise me, I know I'm talking a lot about returns, wouldn't surprise me if you went back to Aston Villa under you know, Emery. Mm-hmm. Um, I think yeah, you do a good sure. job there. But then again, you do have to think, oh, these clubs got rid of these players for a reason. You never know. But wouldn't wouldn't surprise me if you went back there um, under the new manager. But yeah, I can't disagree. I think he, we talked about it last night. I think he would do really, really well under Diego Simeone. No, I totally agree. Atletico could be a good shout. It's just obviously his end product. Um, seen like the last, like he's played like ninety Premier League games the last three years. He's five assi- or five goals to assist. That's, that's, that's horrendous. It's not great, like. like he's so like when you watch him, sometimes he came on at half time against Man United, and for like fifteen minutes he looked like a world beater. Mm-hmm. You're like, how are we going to stop this lad? And then he just disappears. And it's just his end product as well. Obviously, their Wolves haven't got a striker, so you can maybe say that as well. When Jimenez was there, he was linking really was well with him. Up. And he has played like right wing back and all yeah. before. So I think Atletico Madrid, somewhere he can go to improve. Because the talents are, he went back to Barcelona. I was actually surprised he came back to Wolves again. I he thought he was going to leave. For Barcelona because too. he went to Barcelona and he played okay. And yeah. I yeah, yeah. like him okay. So I was kind of like, him and I thought he was going to stay. Yeah. I thought he was going to stay there. Um, but then that shows as well, he, the Spanish football could suit him. Because he played Good. well when he got there. So Atletico Madrid, again, it's just end product. Yeah. And at Atletico Madrid, maybe he'll help him because we've seen like players like when Trippier went out there, how much he's improved. Mm-hmm. You know, uh and he's versatile as well. You could play him in any position. Yeah. You play him as like a right back, really. Oh, you could. Yeah, he's you know, he played right back low. He's strong, he's got the pace, he's skillful. Yeah. He's a, he is a really good player. It's just like some maximum same kind of player, isn't he? He's just so frustrating to watch. Yeah. Wolves must tear their hair out watching him because you're like, you've all the talent there, it's just the end product. But that's why he'd be good for Atletico especially because their best midfielder, in my opinion, is Marcus Llorente and he's been playing yeah, right back for right them. Back, yeah. So if they had a damage or and had Marcus Llorente back playing in midfield, yeah. Atletico Madrid could be back. Prove. Yeah, they could. They well could. Well, look, that'll do it for this episode anyway, folks. Thank you very much for listening. As always, you can find us on the Parlay Sports app. That's P-R-L-Y Sports. Uh, you can also follow us at Bottom Bins Pod on Twitter. Instagram and TikTok. As well, we have a new YouTube channel, uh, our YouTube Shorts channel, where we upload uh, regular daily content up there. Um, we are going to have more content coming in in the next few weeks just because we are sort of finished exams now. We're getting the last of our coursework done and then it's fully into the bottom bins for, for over the summer. So, yes, for the next few, week, guys, for the next few weeks, guys, do expect two episodes a week. Um, we are going to be doing more of these kind of lists um, as episodes uh, now because they seem to be going quite well and quite successful and yeah, to be honest lovely. they're actually fun to sit down and do the research for as well yeah, yeah. so um i think you get a few surprises when you're looking at looking down through it's a I don't talk about yeah. i would never dream about talking about bobby Firmino. yeah you know what i mean uh, but you know it was but you nice did it to today yeah about what, like what he's done you have a bit of debate as well like about Zaha yeah and takes a gas exactly you know and the fans obviously can give us opinions of what exactly. they think exactly exactly yeah. and look at some of the boys that do that into the podcast do give regular opinions on it anyway so I'm sure they they all they can't wait for the next one because they're like right what shade are they going to talk this <laughs> week? 
Um, so look guys thank you very much for listening um, to all our recent episodes we had an episode out on uh, Wednesday there so please go and give it a listen That it's our most regular up to date Premier League episode and as always keep a bottom bins keep a bottom bins